Kia ora, welcome back, I'm Nikki Koda, and in this video I'm going to show you how you can set up some simple uh, rig controls for your spine of your character. Um, so you can see here that uh, I've got one that will uh, control the hips, um, so I can rotate the hips and uh, everything rotates sort of independently from the rest of the body. So I can uh, rotate them around this axis, um, can also yeah, move them uh, sort of around the Z axis and the torso is not uh, is not inheriting any of the rotation um, I can, and as a sort of benefit of that I can also rotate the um, the torso in the opposite direction to the hips which is uh, a very sort of common thing uh, when you're creating a walk cycle your hips and your torso will uh, move in the opposite directions to each other so it's really important to isolate the movement of these two bones and um, the last thing that you'll notice is uh, when I rotate the uh, the shoulders like this, uh, the head actually just remains uh, looking straight forward in, in this direction. So just added some simple like head tracking here where the, uh, the character will basically always look at a fixed point um, regardless of what the rest of the body is doing. Um, and this whole thing, the whole sort of hip bone of the character can be moved just by grabbing this joint and moving it around like this and uh, everything else sort of is parented and will follow accordingly. Cool, yeah, so uh, let's get into it. This video follows on from a previous video of May's, uh, creating foot roll using drivers in Blender 2.9. So in the scene here, I've got um, a very simple character with a simple uh, spine setup, and uh, the only way to basically animate the spine at the moment is by rotating these individual uh, joints, and um, basically that kind of falls down after a while. So what I want to do is add some rig controls to make it easier to um, to animate this. And let me just kind of explain uh, why. Um, so imagine you're animating a walk cycle. Um, generally your left leg would come forward at some point and uh, the left hip bone would also come forward at the same time. Um, but what happens when I rotate the, uh, the hip bone on the Z axis like this to bring it forward is the uh, the torso actually bends the opposite direction so this right arm has now come back um, but that's actually the opposite of what we want to happen um, because what happens in a walk cycle is uh, your right arm will actually be doing the counter to what your left leg is doing so if your left leg is forward your right arm should be forward not backwards like it is now so um, to do that the uh, the right shoulder would would basically come forward to bring the right arm forward so the shoulders and the hips actually should be doing the kind of roughly the opposite of each other and uh, right now they're, they're basically linked to the same rotation um, which makes it a little bit awkward to uh, animate because every time I bring the left hip forward I'd have to then do some counter animation to bring the right shoulder forward um, and yeah so what we need to do is basically isolate the movement of this hip bone from the rest of the torso um, so the easiest way to do that is just select the bone above the hips and go to the bone tab here and just disable inherit rotation and now um, when I rotate this joint you can see um, that only this joint uh, rotates and the rest of the body is now sort of just fixed in place which is cool except um, if I rotate it around this axis now the character looks uh, pretty weird and the reason for that is uh, the the hip bone doesn't actually rotate around this uh, this joint here where this dotted line is pointing to it rotates around um, this pivot point so we need to change the pivot point to the top of the um, the hip bone and the way that we're going to do that is by constructing a new bone at the top of the hips, uh, clear the parent, and now duplicate the um, the hip bone by pressing Shift D. Um, so I'm just going to hit like right click to come out of grab mode. Now press N on the keyboard to open up this menu. Hold down Shift, and I'm just going to reduce the length um, just so I can see this bone a little bit easier. Uh, so it's not overlaid over the top of the other one. And now I'm going to Shift select this main bone here and parent it. Uh, like this. So now when I rotate this bone you can see that this bone is now um, its rotation point is actually around uh, the top of the hips and uh, now all we need to do is basically copy the transform of this bone to this bone um, and that will make the, uh, the hip bone basically follow this arc that um, that this uh, child bone is sort of rotating around now. So to do that just uh, click this bone, shift select the hip bone Control shift uh, C to bring up the constraints menu and now um, add a copy transform constraint 
And now you can see when I rotate this bone, um, it, yeah, the pivot point is now rotating around this axis, which is yeah, pretty cool. So you can see that like uh, when I rotate around the Y axis, you can get some sort of like jiggle uh, in your hips, which is quite useful. Um, when I rotate around the Z axis, uh, I can now rotate the hips independently from the torso and um, the X axis, <laughs> you can probably imagine what that's uh, going to be used for, but probably not so much a walk cycle. Um, so the next bit is uh, just uh, creating another bone to control the rest of the spine here. Um, so if I go into edit mode, I'm going to extrude another bone. Um, at the base of the neck and I'm just going to clear the parent and uh, yeah basically I just want to have this bone control the rotation of all three of these bones um, so I'm going to go to pose mode so because yeah um, I don't really want to rotate these individually like this it's a uh, it's a little bit annoying so um, what I'm going to do is create a um, child uh, transform a child of constraint on each of these spine bones and let me just do that quickly. And now when I rotate this bone, you can see that each of those three bones are basically inheriting the rotation of this bone here, which is um, quite useful. And I can actually go into the constraints tab for each of the bones and change the influence. And this just sort of lets you control um, how bendy each one of these bones are, uh, because yeah, basically, I might actually just set that top one to 0.3. Um, this middle one here is should probably have the most influence because you're most flexible around this part of your uh, your body, the, the the top of the waist, basically. That's where it's most bendy, um, and less so down here and less so sort of in the upper torso. So you can actually control that just to give a more sort of realistic um, kind of bend to your character. And yeah, now I can actually rotate the um, the shoulders as well. Sorry, this uh, the shading is uh, really uh, distracting. I'm just going to turn it off for a minute. Um, yeah, so now I can rotate the shoulders around the z-axis, and I can also rotate the hips in uh, isolation to the rest of the torso, which is yeah quite useful. And you can see um, also when I rotate around um, the shoulders, the waist is also getting a slight amount of rotation as well, just to make it look a little bit more realistic. Um, so the last thing really to do is um, just if you're walking forward, your uh, shoulders are probably going left and right like this, but your head uh, shouldn't really be shaking like that. It, it just uh, it just looks straight forward when you when you're walking or running. Um, so. One way, a simple way to do that would just actually be disabling the inherit rotation and now the head is fixed. Um, but what I'm going to do instead is um, create a damped track constraint because that will let me control exactly where the head is, is uh, looking as well. So start by extruding uh, a bone from the base of the head, uh, clear the parent on that one and just drag that somewhere out in front. Um, and now I'm going to go to pose mode and uh, shift select the head, control shift C to bring up the constraints menu and add a damped track constraint. And if I just quickly turn on the axes, you can see that the Y axis is um, the one that is uh, this uh, bone is now pointing towards. Um, so we just need to change it to be this, uh, this Z axis instead or Z axis. Um, so yeah, if I um, go to the constraints tab here, this bottom one, sorry, I always think it is this this bone properties, but it's actually the bone constraints properties. Um, yeah, just set this to uh, Z, uh, Z, <laughs> sorry. And uh, yeah, now the head is going to be always pointing at this, um, this bone here. And so if I had the head sort of positioned like this, for example, um, I can now rotate the, uh, the shoulders and the head just remains fixed looking at this point, which is, um, yeah, pretty useful. So I'm just going to add um, some slight rotation to the neck as well. You can see that only the head is moving at the moment. Um, so just very similar approach. Um, extrude another bone from the base of the neck. Uh, clear the parent on this one. And then just move it out somewhere close to the other bone. And yeah, I'm going to add a damped track constraint in the same way just shift, shift select the neck and then control shift c to bring up the constraints menu uh, damped track and just set that to the z-axis and now um, 
yeah, I can parent, uh, well, basically, yeah, I can move this this bone around and the neck now moves, um, but I kind of want them to actually move together. So if I just go to edit mode, hit control P to keep the offset. Um, now, if I move this parent one, both the, uh, the head and the neck move together, which is pretty cool. Um, the last sort of annoying thing to fix up is this uh, this glitching when you go in and out of uh, pose in edit mode and that's because the neck is authored at this angle here but uh, in pose mode it's trying to orient the z-axis directly towards um, this bone so what we need to do is just uh, move this down roughly somewhere like this um, and you can kind of just keep going in and out of edit mode until you get something that is pretty much without any movement. Yeah, I'm kind of happy with that. Cool. Um, so yeah, that's that's basically it for the head. Um, yeah, so I can now move the head. The neck moves as well. Oh, one more thing I'll just do is actually reduce the influence of the uh, the neck slightly, um, just so the head uh, basically has more movement than the neck. Um, I just think it looks a little bit better. Yep, and so that's pretty much it. Um, the last thing is actually just being able to adjust the um, the overall position of the of the, the the hips. And in this case, when I do this, I actually want the um, the head to the head sort of tracking bit to move with it. So I'm going to um, just create a child transform constraint by selecting this main hip bone and uh, create a child of constraint. Um, but what I, I still want to be able to rotate the hips without the um, the head moving. So I'm just going to deselect the inherit rotation part and also just turn off scale because I don't think that's super useful. And now I can uh, sort of rotate the hips without the head moving, except um, when I do grab the hips, the, the head sort of moves with it as well, which uh, is going to be yeah pretty useful. Um, and I would say the last thing to fix is really just uh, kind of the same um, same sort of situation with this bone here. Um, uh, let me just check. Yeah, so I can still I can still grab this uh, this bone and move it around. Um, yeah, and it kind of all inherits the position of this one as well. Um, so pretty much just similar setup for this one. Um, just shift select that uh, the sort of torso control and add a child of constraint. Um, reduce the rotation, scale, uh, just hit set inverse to kind of clear it back to the original starting point. And now, yeah, when I move this, the whole system kind of moves together. Um, I can rotate this uh, on its own, and I can rotate this on its own, and I can also move the head around. Um, so that is pretty much it. Um, I think I just want to move this down a little bit. Um, the very very final thing is really just moving these bones to their own layer um, so because none of the rest of these bones are actually going to be used during animation so I'm going to uh, shift select the three main bones go to the pose menu change the bone layers and just put them on this layer here and now if I go to the skeleton yeah now I can just select that layer and I've got all the controls I basically need to um, to control the the characters uh, sort of hips and torso and everything um, and yeah and the head as well cool so that is uh, pretty much it for this tutorial um, thanks for watching appreciate it if you made it to the end and if you'd like to hear more of these videos um, or see more of these videos rather uh, just yeah hit the subscribe button and the bell notification icon and if you enjoyed the video um, hit the like button share it with your friends all of that stuff and yeah, uh, stay tuned for more videos. We'll, we'll see you on the next one. All right, thanks for watching. Kakite.